Good morning, Sheriff Edwards. Good morning, Billy Ray. I bet you ain't never seen a day as pretty as this back east in uh... Boston. Actually, Boston can be quite beautiful, Sheriff. Billy Ray, it's Mr. Smith, okay? Okay. Morning, Billy Ray. Betty. Morning, Mrs. Tulane. I do. Okay. I usually wonder whether you're doing your homework or not. No. I mean, do you ever think of me as a as a woman? Someday, Nettie, you're gonna be a very beautiful woman. In other words, you don't. Well, Nettie, let me tell you something. When you're a little girl, all you want is to become a woman. But when you're a grown woman, you realize how important it is to be a little girl. Now it's different for a man. I mean, when he's a boy, he's expected to behave and mind his folks. But when he becomes a man, I mean, he has to stand tall, speak the truth, make an honest day's living, and be able to look any other man straight in the eye without flinching. Good morning, Billy Ray. Good morning, Charlie. Beautiful morning for procreation. Be fruitful and multiply, saith the Lord. <laughs> Billy Ray? Seven minus three equals... N now think about this for a minute, Lon. Let's say you had seven chickens, and your neighbor came over and took away three of them. How many would you have left? Well, I think I'd have seven, because my daddy'd shoot him before he got out the hen house. <laughs> I think that's enough arithmetic for today, Lon. Why don't you sit down? <laughs> We're starting a new Kid Durango book today. Yay! This is one of my personal favorites. Is there a girl in this one, Billy? I mean, Mr. Smith? Yes, there is, Nettie. Now, I think there's something in here for everyone. If you'd prefer, we could go back to the arithmetic. No! Kid Durango of Arizona, the Dust Devils. The layer of dew that covered the prairie disappeared quickly as the sun rose over the foothills. The moon hung around for a while and then sunk far below the ranges. The day began like a thousand other Arizona days. That was until the cloud came. It began on the horizon, shadows of dust moving at great speed. And then the pounding hooves on the hard ground. As the whirlwind got closer, you could see into the dust, the shapes of horses and then the riders. Riders with guns on both hips and bandoliers across their chests. They rode hard. They rode for the purpose. As they approached the town, 
They rein back on their horses. The dust around them settled, and you could see their faces. Faces weathered by the Mexican sun. Faces marked by violence. When the citizens of the town saw the riders, they instinctively withdrew into the shadows of the boardwalk. Many of the merchants went inside their shops and locked their doors. Shades came down, close signs appeared as the town prepared to look the other way. It was pretty clear why they were there. They had an appointment at the bank, and it wasn't to make a deposit. They were a ruthless band of thieves and killers with no regard for human life. It was as if they were put on this earth by the devil to torment decent, God-fearing folks who worked hard to make an honest living. Just like in the story, Billy Ray. Oh! You got guns! They're coming this way! Wow! Stay in your seats! Stay in your seats! Come on, get out of them! Oh, no, no, stay, stay in here, see? Nanny, move! Move! This is real, Daddy! Daddy! Venga, esa señorita.
Ray. Bill Ray, you all right? He's looking kind of peaking. Somebody better go get the doc. They have my nutty. My daughter there? Can anyone see my Nettie there? Billy Ray, can you see my eyes aren't what they used to be? Yeah, of course. Look at that. Yeah, in the back. Looks like just one rider, huh? I can't, can't tell. tell. I don't think there's anybody on them horses. I see the sheriff. I swear that's him. Where are the others? That's Jethro's horse. Where the hell's Jethro? There's blood on the saddle. What the hell happened, Sheriff? Oh, Lord. They cut out his tongue. Excuse me, Deputy. Did you say that they cut out his tongue? Hey, here it is, right here. Now, even if we could get a posse together, we wouldn't know where to find him. U.S. government and the federality's been searching for him for years. I'll tell you something about this El Diablo. They did find him once. Caught him down in Amos, a little border town north of Laredo. Caught him, tried him, and hanged him all in the same night. But he wouldn't die. He just hang there by his neck, spitting at the crowd like they disgusted him. Cussed him out so bad the women folk had to go home. I was there when they cut him down. And I thank the Lord I left when I did. Because three days later, so the story goes, El Diablo returned to Amos with his men and cut out the heart of every man, woman, and child in the whole blessed town and just left them there to bleach in the sun. <laughs> pretty soon, they started to rot. And then the buzzards come and started pecking out what's left of their eyeballs. Now, Spidey, that's enough of that. Devil don't right. never die. No, sir. So no one is going to do anything about getting my Nettie back. Well, I already cut out her heart and eaten it. I didn't say nothing about eating their hearts. He just cut them out and left. Spidey! Well, I'm sorry, deputy. Or are you the sheriff now? Because if you are, then it's your responsibility to go after El Diablo. What are you going to do about it, sheriff? Well, uh, last report, Doc said that the sheriff's feeling much better. And I suppose he's been working on his sign language, too. Spivey's <laughs> right. You're the new sheriff. We pay your wage. That's right. That's right. I intend to bring Nettie back. I said, I intend to bring back Nettie. You and who else, schoolteacher? <laughs> well, me and Kid Durango, that's who. Oh. I mean, Kid Durango and I. Hey, Charlie, you got competition. Can't even shoot a gun. Billy Ray. Well, I intend to learn to, to shoot a gun. The old Diablo is sure gonna drop a load of manure in his pants when he sees you are coming at him. <laughs> Well, 
Well, I do know one man. My uh, second cousin, Maggie Sue's brother-in-law, J.D. Shones. Yeah. He's some kind of lawman now. Texas Ranger. He's supposed to have rode with Kit Durango. To tell you the truth, we never had all that much to do with him. He's a, sort of the disgrace of the family, you know. He shot and killed my cousin Deke about eight years ago up in Sonoma. He also shot and killed my daddy's brother Edward. Where is he now? Well, last time I heard, he was up in Millennium. Some kind of marshal or ranger up there. Hell, ain't but a turd's difference between old J.D. and the scum he hauls in. But if anybody could help you find Kid Durango, it'd be him. You need bigger bottles. Be darn careful who you show that to. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Sheriff Epworth wrote you this note. Don't go. <clears throat> we thank him for the advice. You're a darn fool, Billy Ray. Yes, sir, I know. Come on, Rojo. Only God can kill the devil, Billy Ray. Forward. My journey did not begin on a good note. I was nonetheless determined to press on, and after arranging an alternate mode of transport, I arrived in Millennium three days later. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tell me where I can find a Mr. J.D. Shones. What do you want with him, Sonny? I just have a very important question I'd like to ask him. You should have asked him yesterday. All aboard! We are now committing this man, Mr. Jones, uh, Mr. Shones, to his life in the hereafter. And we would like to take a moment to acknowledge his contributions to our community. During Mr. Schoen's short-lived term as sheriff, he served the public to the best of his abilities. 
He shot eight men and three women, most of whom were engaged in breaking the law. I'm sure the others were honest mistakes. We will what happened? Mr. Schoen. Friend of yours? Sort of. Yeah. Shame here. Sort of. You got business with JD? Yeah. Well, I'm the sheriff now. Maybe I can be of some assistance. <laughs> Dirt on it. Let's get out of here. Oh, my Lord. Get your hands. Oh, come on. Come on. You related to him? No, sir. Anyway, I don't know. Just come on. Come on. Thank you for distracting them from me. What you looking at? You just shot him in the back. His back was to me. Come on, boy. Help me out of this hole. Come on, help me out. Besides, he shot J.D. in the back. Just seemed right. He killed J.D.? Yeah. Said he wanted to be sheriff real bad. Now he's sheriff real bad. Rio here don't like gunfire. Hurts his ears. Maybe you can tell me where I can find a man named Kid Durango. What do you want him for? They say he's the fastest gun in the West. Oh, yeah? yeah I, I want to hire him for a job. You got any money? Maybe. Yeah. Hire me. Fast as I used to be, but uh, I cheat real good. But fast don't mean a whole lot these days. Us professional folks are tired of fighting fair and dying for it. You know Kid Durango? Yeah, I know it. Could you take me to him? Where are you from, boy? Originally Boston, Massachusetts. Ah, oh, I figured. Getting on, Rio. Well, maybe you could just, you could help me just point me in the right direction, Mr. Uh, Mr. Um... Van Leek. Thomas Van Leek. Now look, I'd like to stay here and draw you a map. But I think I'd better keep moving before somebody starts asking some questions about how this sheriff got out of office. Figure me and Rio are gonna head for Mexico. Well, Mexico, you know, the man I wish to apprehend is in Mexico. Well, mount up. I wouldn't mind having you tagging along for a while. I don't have a horse. I'm sorry, Rio. If you would be so kind, Leave that saddle where it is. We'll be on our way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
My contact in Millennium, Mr. Shones, had been shot the previous day by a Mr. Murphy, who was in turn shot while I was conversing with him by a Mr. Van Leek. Coincidentally, Mr. Van Leek claimed he was a personal acquaintance of Kid Durango, and after helping to arrange transportation for me, I am presently accompanying him on his journey to Mexico. I'm counting on him providing me with a formal introduction to Kid Durango when we reach his hideout. Uh, uh, how much was you fixing to pay this kid Durango for this job you needed to be done? Whatever the going rate, the fair rate, happens to be. Well, you never did say what it was you needed to be done. Hard to come up with a price if you don't know that. I want to rescue a young girl who was kidnapped by a man presumed to be named El Diablo. And I want to bring him and his compatriots to justice. What's the matter? You can't ride, you can't shoot, you can't even think, boy. You're in the wrong territory. Goddamn fool. Come on, Rio. <laughs> Additional details concerning my trip seemed to discourage Mr. Van Leek from continuing the journey together. I was once again alone, but nevertheless still determined to pursue my quest. Whoa. Hmm. Hmm.
You think we got him? Yeah, but go on over and make sure. You go. You're closer. The hell I am. Dick's closest. I went first last week. Oh, horse shit. I went first and got shot, remember? Oh, shut up. Yeah, but it was only in the head. Well, it still hurts when it affected my balance. You just yelled. I said shut up. Afternoon. Jesus H. Christ, Van Leek. Don't sneak up like that. I wasn't sneaking. What do you want? Just passing through. Got somebody holed up in there? We do. Snared up like a rabbit. Yeah. Boy shot the sheriff? Yeah. Is there a reward? No, no, we're just up here because we want to see justice done. How much? For, uh, $200. Dead or alive. Well, this seemed like enough to go around. Well, I ain't split it more than five ways. In fact, I was hoping that kid would get lucky and shoot a couple of us. So why don't you just back off, Van Lee? Well. Good luck. This won't take but a minute, Rio. Nice shot, kid. Thank you. There's your new horse up there.
Mr. Van Leek? I'd like to take you up on your offer to help me get El Diablo. I'll think about it. Come on, Rio. That was an impressive display of gunmanship today. Gunmanship? I, I was wondering if you might consider teaching me a, a few tricks of the trade. <sighs> they ain't tricks, boy. They read his death. Point that thing at me, boy. There ain't no horse. I'm sorry. Pick a star. What? Lay down on your back. What for? Shut your goddamn hole, boy, and lay down on your back. <coughs> Pick a star. Got one. Uh-huh. That's Enif. Enif? Mm hmm The star you fixing on. It's the brightest star in Pegasus. Constellation of the winged horse. That figures. No, 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 drop your look, boy. You got to concentrate. Keep your eye fixed on that target. Me, you're steady. I got it. Good. Now you keep it there. Till I tell you to stop. Yes, sir. Guys from that target, you did me. Patience, concentration. <clears throat> First two things you gotta learn. Better start praying that wasn't Rio. Thank <laughs> you. 
Vive. You missed. He missed? Guess the balance ain't quite right. Where the hell did you get that? Right off the song, bitch's boot. You got it. Mm -mm, this boy here got it. A couple of weeks ago, they stole his girl. Actually, she was one of my students. Prettiest one in the class, I'll bet. <laughs> I make it a policy not to get involved with my students. This will get us in. Could be. Old El Diablo does favor his spurs. Of course, getting in is the easy part. And if you don't take the whole damn thing in with you, you just might get back out again in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> the hell you looking at, boy? Nothing. Damn right. There ain't nothing there. <laughs> Although Mr. Van Leek kept his intentions pretty much to himself, <clears throat> it appeared that the plan was to assemble a group of skilled professionals to help me in my endeavor. The first person selected was a Mr. B.B. Patterson, who had been captured by El Diablo's men several years ago. He managed to escape with some useful information, but returned home minus a foot. I'm not used to riding horses. Shall we gather at the river where bright angels' feet have trod with its crystal tide forever flowing from the throne of God? Yes, we'll gather at the river. Hear the word of the Lord, O people of Bendix. Bendix Rock, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. There is no faithfulness of God in the land. There is swearing Amen. and lying, Amen. killing, Amen. stealing, Amen. and committing adultery. Amen. 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 Nothing escapes the power and the vision of the Lord. Those who have sinned will be punished. Yes, Lord. But we are here also to forgive, to ask the Lord for mercy, so that the souls of Jonathan Napier and Bob Zamudio, Roberto, so that their souls can be saved. Praise God. If you do not take the Lord seriously, then he will not take you seriously. Not only will the souls of these poor unfortunates be exiled for eternity in hell, but so will yours as well. You must share with your Lord the fruits of your labors. Only then can he truly become your savior. Damn, get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I want to see this collection please, passed around once again. And this time, I want to see it overflow with evidence of your love for the Lord. Might I add that if I'm disappointed, there won't be any show. No, no. Uh, justice meted out today. But rather, these men will be released back into your fold to continue robbing and killing and having their way with your wives and daughters with the sheeps and goats and turkeys of your flocks. Turkeys? May God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. You recognize him? 
One of them's Bob Zamudio. A pretty good hand with explosives. And one dangling. I don't know. We could use some help. <clears throat> Let us all join in and sing the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, whilst the good Lord determines the fate of our uh, brethren here. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grace to bear. Equal shares all around. We don't need your dead men now. I think that can be arranged. Today we went to church. It was very different from what I was used to. I had the opportunity to witness my first hanging. In fact, the gentleman who was hanged, a Mr. Pitchfork Napier, has elected to join our outfit. I'm looking forward to discussing our plans with my new companions. <laughs> Who in the hell is this not no little panty waist? <laughs> he's with me. Hell, he's the one that stole this. Is this all we got to go on? His spurs are like his fingers. They're like his toes. They're part of his body. Hell, that was his daddy's spurs and his daddy's daddy's. His daddy's spurs and his daddy's daddy's. <laughs> what a sorry bunch of washed up has been. Right. He's muy valuable. Those little red things are real rubies, Bob. Roberto. <laughs> El Diablo's treasure. Indian gold. European gold, just waiting there for us to take it. He's right about that. I seen it with my own eyes. El Diablo has something worth a little more than gold down there. There's a little girl hey, who... Hey, fuck I... you, little girl. Now, just a second. Uh, you don't want to I... do that, boy. Yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Come on, boy. Come on! <laughs> Come on. Come get it, boy. <laughs> Now we're going to need dynamite and someone to handle it. How about it, Bobby? I think I told you once or twice, Altolicus, that I do not answer to that gringo name. Look, uh, Senor Roberto, we very much appreciate you helping us with your special talents. Well, uh, dynamite is like a woman. It takes the right hombre to know how to make her explode. <laughs> There's somebody out there. I don't hear nothing. Engines. Engines? Ain't no damn engines around here. We're in Mexico, asshole. The Ponca Chunks, asshole. I lived with him for a year. Don't never rob no Indian. I rob an Indian, it's same as anybody. Yeah, did you sleep with his wife, too? What was it like sleeping with an Indian woman? Better than a nigger. <coughs> Thank you, boy. Now, generally, I let the man off first time. He say that to me. That is, if 
He say he's sorry. How about you, Mr. Napier? You sorry? I don't hear you, Mr. Napier. I'm waiting. I think somebody ought to try to talk to him. Oh, go on, Bob. You speak him sign. Roberto. Chief, understand. You full of shit, brown man. And name not Chief. Name Dancing Bear. <laughs> we added a new member to our group last night, an Indian, a Mr. Dancing Bear, who had been tracking Mr. Napier for some time. Apparently, Mr. Napier had bedded down with his wife, a transgression which is not looked upon favorably by members of his particular tribe. I never liked him. Once Dancing Bear exacted his revenge, he told us that El Diablo had stolen gold from his people and turned many of them into slaves. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, the next step was to locate a box of dynamite that Mr. Zamudio had buried in the ground. Once the spot was found, I was volunteered to dig it up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just keep that, keep that. What? Get out of the hole. You know, this little cachet here has enabled Roberto and me to open accounts at over 22 of the best banks in the Southwest. You can get me out of here now. Not fast. What's the matter? It's decaying, I think. Yeah, I told you we shouldn't bury it here, Bob. There's no shade. Atolicus. Too hot, Bob. Atolicus. So now's the time to make me angry, okay? Ay, 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 ay. The law still up. The dynamite was secured to the buckboard by Mr. Patterson and Mr. Zamudio. There still seemed to be some question as to its stability, however. We're a bit far apart. 
Do you think that might not be too good for their morale? Feel free to join them, boy. Sure they'd welcome the company. After riding hard the entire day, we finally crossed into Mexico. The buckboard didn't explode, and I took this as a positive sign. But I was very sore and was glad when we pulled into a small village for refreshments. having <clears throat> the cantina we selected would not have been my first choice but it was the only one in town it hosted a different sort of clientele than what I was used to back east on my bill. Thomas, you devil, please come here. Join me. Thomas Van Leek, as I live and breathe. So nice to see you. Hello. Hello. Oh, aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? Mm-hmm. This here is Billy Ray Smith. Boy, this here is Truman Feathers, sometimes known as Kid Durango. Kid Durango? Mm-hmm. Kid Durango. <laughs> Durango? Mm hmm. This boy's read every one of your books, Truman. Really? Kid Durango. Mm hmm. Oh. What brings you to this hole? Well, actually, I'm researching our next adventure. Mm. Smoke signals indicated that you were headed in this direction. <laughs> You know, I have a hat just like that. I, I, I love your outfit. Uh, <laughs> where are you from? Originally Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, really? I've been to Rhode Island. What did he mean when, when he said uh, our next adventure? Oh, well, well, it's a wonderful arrangement, really. See, Thomas runs around the West, risking his silly neck, and I incorporate his exploits into my little true stories. You mean what he means, ain't nobody gonna buy no stories about no Negro cowboys. Well, well, it, it, it's it's dramatic license, really. It's necessary evil in the literary world. Dramatic license, hell. A whole bunch of lies. You made all that money and I never did see squat. 
But what really gets me is all that crap about looking a man right in the eye. Hell, a man don't go for a gun with his eye. Look at his hand. Make a note of it. They were with El Diablo in the bank. The unattractive one is Pistoso. That other one ain't no lady killer. Yes, that's Chalk Mole. Do you know them? Well, they come here to unwind after their forays of raping and pillaging. I've interviewed both of them. Pistoso is surprisingly verbal. Hey, How do you feel about being the fastest gun in the West? Huh? You're the fastest girl in the West, huh? <laughs> Do you know to whom this belongs? Where you get that gringo, huh? Can you take me to him? Take you to whom? <laughs> take you to whom? <laughs> Importa, hombre! El Diablo. <laughs> El Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going, Gringo, huh? I had successfully shot a man in a showdown in the middle of the street at high noon. Actually, it was much later in the day, but it was still quite a thrill. <laughs> Good shot, boy. <laughs> I don't condone killing, but this Pistoso probably deserved it. If he traveled with El Diablo, he had some severe character flaws, I was sure. Good shot. I 
I meet you in the morning, just outside of town, the tree of death. Come along. Tree of death. Sí, Cecilia. Tu nombre será Cecilia, el nombre de mi madre. Never trust a man who talks to his snake. It's Truman. Morning. What the hell you think you're doing, Feathers? Well, I've decided to join your expedition. Not with me, you ain't. You won't have to worry about me. Not you I'm worried about. I'm worried about us. With you out there. Oh, Thomas, please. I'm sure I can perform some very useful functions on the trail. And besides, I'm an excellent cook. Yeah, can you make coffee? Well, as a matter of fact, I brought along some fresh Colombian beans. And, by the way, I make a wonderful omelet. Hmm. What is omelet? Well, omelet is, um... Diced ham, cheese, peppers, folded into three eggs, cooked in an iron skillet. Slightly oiled. Mushrooms, snake meat, squash, good? Good, well, um, I wouldn't recommend the squash, but it's entirely up to you. For Christ's sake, let's move out! <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Even though I was still somewhat puzzled by the revelation that Truman was Kid Durango, or not Kid Durango, I was excited that he joined us. It afforded me the opportunity to clear up some of my confusion, and I look forward to one of his omelets. Now, I still don't understand why you're coming along with us. Well, actually, it's your example, Billy Ray. You see, I've always written about other people's exploits, and, well, I'd like to think that before I pass on, I could include a few adventures of my very own. That was such a wonderful moment yesterday in the street with you and Vistoso. It was thrilling. Virtually right itself. You, you're going to put me in one of your books? Of course. Every story needs its hero. <laughs> hey, boy. Let me see that spur. Yes, sir. <laughs> You hold on to that hat, boy. That's a calling card. Go ahead on. Be right behind you. Go on. Good luck, Billy Ray. Thank you. Goodbye. Excuse me, could you tell me precisely why they call this the Tree of Death? <clears throat> Excuse me. I met Chalk Mall as arranged, and I followed him deeper into Mexico. My nerves, normally quite steady, were acting up as I sensed us getting closer and closer to El Diablo. I'm sure the tension would have been eased if Chalk Mall had been a better conversationalist. Perhaps he was shy. spread out for us to get all at once. I think there might just be a solution to this problem forthcoming.
We split up here. That left tunnel will let you out above the village. You wait for my signal. You love me. I am. Um... I think a little prayer is in order before we embark upon this perilous ordeal. Now, if you will all join me in reciting the Lord's Prayer. Yeah! Our hey! Father, uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give this is a very day. sorry war party we have, brown man. Did the best I could, red man. I'm here to free my people. Don't you get in my way. Wouldn't think of it. Yeah. Thomas? I'd like to have a word with you. If it's short. I find your behavior in this endeavor questionable. See, it's perfectly obvious to me what you're doing. You're using this boy as a diversion so that you can steal as much gold as you can carry. Only dancing bears motivated by, by honorable attentions. As far as I'm concerned, you're all a bunch of mercenaries. You finished? Yes, I... I had to get it off my chest. Hope you feel better. Come on, Rio! <laughs> El Diablo won't touch that kid without his spur. When I arrived at El Diablo's compound, he was not in the vicinity. I decided to wait and not be impatient. I knew I was still carrying an ace in my pocket, so to speak. the boy who killed Pestoso. <laughs> what is your name, little boy? William Raymond Smith. Mr. Uh, Devil, is it? And I understand, Mr. William Raymond Smith. You have brought something for me. Yes, sir. This is my spur, I believe. That is correct. There is something missing. That is also correct. Where is the missing piece? That's for me to know and you to find out. I want to exchange it. The missing piece, that is, for the girl. And what girl is that? Miss Nettie Tuline. You kidnapped her in front of my school about five weeks ago. So many towns, so many girls. She, she's about five foot four, blonde hair, blue eyes, quite attractive, and a very good student. Does she look like? This girl? Yes, yeah, she does. <laughs> I, I don't recall that outfit. Yes. She is quite attractive. I could not believe my eyes. This was not the same Nettie who was in my classroom five weeks ago. It was El Diablo's work, I was sure. And she is a very good student. Nettie! I like my spurs very much, Mr. Smith. They belong to my father. And his father's father's father. I would like to have back the missing piece you have stolen. Now, technically, it wasn't stolen. But you see, Rosita, 
Prosita? My Prosita means more to me than a family bubble. Seems your plan has taken an unexpected turn for the worst, Thomas. Ah, spare spurs. Spoiled by spare spurs. Try saying that three times fast. Spoiled by spare spurs. Spoiled by spare spurs. Spoiled by spare spurs. Shut up. I'm sorry. It's just I'm. Worried about the boy. Do you think they'll hurt him? I'm gonna hurt you if you don't shut up. Get Durango. My people, all the way riding the back. All right, you can ride in the front on the way home. No, not the way home now. It's your turn, Uncle Lucas. I'm not getting in the back now with that godforsaken pet of yours. And there. don't call her godforsaken. Why you always say godforsaken? What do you mean? Look, quiet. Gentlemen, I'll handle this. These are my people. Buenos dias, amigos. ¿Cómo estamos? Todo bien. Nice pants. These are not my people. Damn it. I knew we should have taken a right at that last fork. Should have turned right. Throw down your weapon. Hey, come on, guys, settle down here, huh? We got no quarrel with you. We're just delivering some supplies. Yes, Autonicus Collins Catering. How do you do? I would like to introduce you to my assistants. This is Bob. Roberto. Uh, BB. We have fine wines and delicacies, silken robes. <laughs> What's in the bag? It's nothing. You can have anything you want in the wagon, but don't touch the bag, okay? I will decide what I want. Amigo, I would rather die than to give you that bag. Oh. <laughs> Any other requests? <laughs> Ringo, the bag. Pronto.
When my family came to this country, Mr. Smith, they encountered incredible intelligence and incredible savagery. The Mayas built pyramids, charted the heavens, and gave us our calendar. But the Aztecs brought the art of human sacrifice to a new height. <laughs> different than writing about it. Not true, man. He took Nettie. We have to catch him. Mm-hmm. That's why you're here, for the gold. That, that's more important to you than saving the girl? Listen, boy, that girl ain't my problem. I found a piece of the outfit Nettie was wearing next to the cave. It confirmed my suspicions that El Diablo had forced her to escape with him.
Betty? boy looking for something I want the girl and how are you going to get her back with your little stick <laughs> give up the girl Diablo now who is this little boy my name Kid Durango. <laughs> oh, Kid Durango. Am I to be frightened by this name? Truman, you, you don't have to do this. Yes, I do. Truman. Since you are the guest, Mr. Kid Durango, I will wait for you to make the first move. Do that. I did. I did. <coughs> oh, it hurts. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I never thought about the pain. I assumed it would be over quickly. Perfectly good scarf. I'm sorry. <coughs> I want you. To, I want you to do something for me. Anything. Anything. I'll, I'll, I'll do anything. Whose arms are you going to die, little boy? He didn't even go for his gun. I was getting bored. I am a busy man. Now, where would you like me to shoot you? I will give you the choice. Where? La cabeza? El corazón? Uh. El... Estomago? I would not recommend the stomach. It is very painful and takes a long time to die. But make your decision quickly, please. You've seen I am an impatient man. How about you just wing me on the shoulder, right about here? <laughs> You're a very funny little boy. Huh. I think 
Maybe... La cabeza. Diablo. Finally, someone who is worthy of the challenge. Cut the bullshit, El Diablo. Make your move. Try again. Damn, boy. You shot him in the back. Well, his back was to me. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I shot El Diablo. It may not have been a showdown in the middle of the street at high noon, but it happened. Mr. Van Leek was there to document the event. He seemed to approve of my tactics. We buried the preacher, Roberto, Bibi, and Truman in the high plains. Dancing Bear picked out the spot, saying that the ground was rich in his ancestors' blood and would nourish our compatriots' souls. 
I don't have much left to say, except uh, I don't plan to join you no time soon. It was with great sadness as I knelt at Truman's grave. He had saved my life, and there was no way I would ever be able to pay him back. He had proven to be perhaps the bravest of us all. I regret that I would never be able to really know him. Back, Billy Ray. Someday. Billy Ray? Only God can kill the devil, Charlie. That's right, Billy Ray. That's right. <laughs> when I told Mr. Van Leek that I was going to write an account of our adventure, his ears picked up. Suddenly, he was a fountain of information, or should I say fabrication. He really got rolling when I mentioned that I intended to pen a whole series of books. Hey, I don't want you to be writing about no white boy with a fancy hat and shirt. I want to hear about uh, the way it really is. Now you square off with another man, you look him right, right in, in the, the back. Right. You look another man right in the back, and you shoot him before so he knows, he knows what, what hit him. <laughs>
Thank you.